Hi. So I am Alberto. I work in in SUSE. In SUSE, we 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 know how to make installer. It's like a tradition there. And this is one more installer. So this is we are going to talk about Yomi. That is a new kind of installer. So what is Yomi? Yomi is a new kind of installer. Uh, for now, oriented for the SUSE family. So we have like micro S, Tumbleweed. It's very oriented for the SUSE family. And it's kind of similar to AutoJust. AutoJust basically is a, uh, this kind of installer that you provide a profile. It generally, it's an XML and uh, it's able to, to make uh, local decisions and produce the, an installer based on this, uh, in this profile document. So, Yomi, one of the goals that we have with Yomi is uh, uh, needs to be used for parallel installations in network. Uh, we have nodes uh, that are, uh, have very different hardware configurations. So network that uh, some nodes are going to have a lot of uh, CPU, memory, hard disk, and different, uh, we, we want deployment that are different in relation with the partitioning and the software and the service that are going to be installed there. Of course, needs to be uh, unattended. So if you have uh, multiple nodes, you don't want to take care of them. That means that uh, you need some kind of freedom and the system needs to make some choices for you when you are not very clear what you are talking about. Also, we want something that is simple to manage. Uh, something, uh, one of the problems about AutoJust is that the X XML is not easy to manage. It's not very DevOps oriented. So basically, uh, it's hard to provide logic inside the, an XML document. It's kind of hard. And if you want to integrate that in something that is Git-based, it's maybe not optional, not, not optimal. We need something that is easy to orchestrate, and this is um, really an innovation in relation with AutoJust. Orchestration is not part of the AutoJust, and we, we are talking about uh, installation where the orchestration is a key component. For example, uh, some installations need to be before others, and some services need to be running before uh, other services are able to connect to the first one. So we need something that can orchestrate. Something that is not a requirement, but I put here is idempotent or idempotent. We want something that is not going to break this, our system. So we have something that is working, and we make the mis a mistake. So we are admins, we make mistakes. We don't want something that is going to be broken because I try to reapply the installer there. So this is a property that we are, uh, we are looking for. And of course, we need something that can work alone. So maybe the installation is a single problem that you have. You have a big network, and you only want to take care of the installation. But we want something that can be integrated into a bigger solution, something that uh, you can put the, this piece of code as a, a one step in a bigger one. Typical use case of Yomi. I mean, uh, if you have experience with OpenStack or Kubernetes, you have a, a, a good candidate for, for, for the usage of this installer. Because in OpenStack, you have a, a lot of nodes. Those nodes are different, this different hardware, because there are different roles involved in, in OpenStack. We have, for example, the control plane. Control plane is usually uh, a very big machine with a lot of uh, memory and a very nice network because, because it's going to be the connection point with the rest of the, of the network. We have some nodes that are going to be uh, computation nodes. So basically, the, the memory is going to be big, but the hard disk is, is not going to be super, super beefy. But uh, uh, the CPU is going to be, of course, uh, the, the feature of that is going to define this kind of node. And we, ha we are going to have a storage node. In a storage node, we, we don't care about much about the memory, maybe. We don't care much about the CPU. But we really care about the, the, the storage that we have installed there. Basically, we, have, we want RAID, LBM. Or we are going to have a specific hardware for, for resolving this, uh, this problem of storage. We have different nodes. And of course, we want different kind of installation there. That means different partitioning, different service, and different users. Yeah. So, as I commented, now we want something that can be integrated in the usual workflow that is uh, 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 
the company or the client is doing during the provisioning. Provisioning is uh, something more complicated than installing and uh, 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 setting up service. Sometimes it's a very big chain of dependencies and uh, it's very easy to neglect the installation part of this, uh, this kind of workflow. So let's try to draw a line about how the a normal installer work. I mean, if you have experience with the game 2 arc, this is uh, going to be very easy for you. But sometimes it's, uh, you are related, so you take Jazz or you take um, whatever installer that you distribution have, and next, 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 and you have a, an installer system. And basically all the installers, whatever you do manually or automatically, have this kind of a step. So basically, the first thing you are going to do is partitioning of the of your devices, maybe taking care of RAID LVM. Eventually, you need to provide a file system in the volume or sub-volume that you are going to have there. If you have ButterFS, probably you are going to create sub-volumes to take advantage of one of the features of ButterFS. Eventually, you are going to install the software inside. I don't know how. Maybe you are going to copy the software from a different source or install via repository. Eventually, you are going to install users, root, for example, but maybe some admin users that you, you, need to, you can uh, provide during installation time. Uh, of course, you need to configure certain service, like the time, the zone that you live, uh, the network, the different uh, service that you want to run, like SSH. Uh, one of the last steps is the bootloader, so group needs to be taken care of uh, at, to be placed in the correct device and in order to provide the, the kernel to be, to, to be in memory in the, correct moment, in the proper moment during the boot process. And maybe there is some kind of a post-installation task. Uh, if you have a snapper, you need to take care of some uh, 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 bits that is not something useful in any installers. If you have battery FS with rat only uh, volumes, you need to, this is the moment where you need to set the flags and whatever you, you, you need to do up post installations. This is extremely easy. I mean, this is very well, uh, very well known and it's very easy to be a CLI. So you have a device, so you boot there, and we are going to see how this can be done, but it's very easy. It's also very easy to, to express in a, in a shell script. Um, you can take this shell script and, and, and grow for, for it until you have an installer, something more complicated, more feature complete. You usually have uh, Eventually, one of the, your iterations, you are going to, to take abstraction of that. For example, in, in, in JAT, we have leaf storage that is abstracting completely the problem of partitioning volume, sub-volume file system. That is a very complicated problem, it's something that we can abstract. But you, you know, abstraction usually uh, provides limitations to, to the thing that you can do. And this is something not very nice, because when you have a different kind of installation, that is something that in SUSE we have, uh, those abstractions are broken. So let, let's talk a bit about how it's a typical installer. So in that case, imagine that we have a server with two devices. We know that we have two devices, SDA and SDB. So the first thing that I need to do uh, where, uh, is, of course, have a USB stick or a DVD where I boot in my operating system, and somehow I have a CLI and I'm able to see the, my devices. So the first thing that I need to do is to create a, the partition label. In that case, we are going to create GPT. It can be a different one, MS-DOS, or or, or any, anyone, so we have GPT. So the next step usually is to create partitions. So we, we are not going to take care of RAID because RAID can live in sometimes uh, without, without a partition. Sometimes needs to be f the firmware who is going to take care of the, the setup of the device, but this is not a problem for us to now, for now. So we are going to create a first partition that is going to, be, to allocate some space for group. So, you know, group uh, maybe needs some more space. Let's, let's create a partition for it and set the proper flag for, for this initial partition. We're going to create the swap. We're going to create the root file system. And in the second device, one single partition. And we know that we are going to use that for battery FS. Next step is usually the file system. So we have uh, four partitions, but only three need, need file system. One for the swap. For uh, the root file system, uh, today we are going to choose X4 and ButterFS. Eventually, because we are using ButterFS, uh, I decide that 
I'm going to create a f the first sub volume. Maybe later I'm going to create a different one. But I'm going to create the first volume. So I need to mount the device, create the, 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 the sub volume, and I'm going to be a good citizen and, and mount the sub volume, the device, sorry. The next step usually is uh, create the file system tab. And this is something very tricky. The, 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 the creation of the file system tab is not a single step in installation process. It's something that is going to be done multiple times to an installation. So we are going to create the file. Of course, first we need to mount the device, create the ATC directory, create the file, make sure that the proper lines are living there. Of course, taking care of the UID for the battery phase because maybe some it's very picky. Okay, this is we have the uh, initial prototype of the file system tab. Now is the moment of the software installation. I decide today that I'm going to use Zipper, the, the, the packet manager. Whatever you use, Debian, DNF, Joom, Zipper, there is a way to, um, the packet manager is going to create a CS root for you inside the, the device via, the, in that case, the slash slash root uh, parameter that we can see here. It's going to, uh, if you have a repository register that is one of the first operations that we do, it's going to take the, the package and uh, uh, taking care of the, the, the CS root environment and install the software inside the CS root. For today, we are going to install a pattern. Pattern is a collection in, in the SUSE Parlango, it's a collection of package. We have to take the super enhanced, enhanced base uh, system, the kernel and group two, so it's going to be very minimal. We are very close because we now can install the bootloader. The bootloader is going to be very tricky because we really know, now need the CS root. So the first thing that we are going to do is uh, do the proper mounts to provide uh, uh, something that we can leverage via CS root. Now we can create the, uh, the initRD. I mean, I know that the, the package from SUSE is going to create the initRD, but I'm not sure the state that it is. So I'm going to create now the initRD that they want. I'm going to make some small configuration in the group uh, uh, etc default group. That is a file that the group mkconfig is going to read to generate the configuration file. And the last step is uh, make the proper installation. You can see that every command is prefixed with CS root. And this is what makes this step a bit tricky. Now the reboot and to have a, fa a proper file system running. CS root in that case is. Uh, uh, you said to, to make sure that the default uh, uh, target is uh, loaded via systemd and system uh, system city reboot. The funny thing is that if you take those steps and you copy and paste, you are going to have a bootable image. So it's not very complicated. But now you can see that there is like a lot of to do comments at the beginning. And this is something that you need to take care of when your system is going to change. When you are going to have something that is going to be a bit different. The thing that, of course, that we miss is that we don't have a way to parameterize anything. We know that we have two devices, so okay, I, I uh, act accordingly to what I have. Uh, we know the kind of partition that we want, but we don't take care about the size. We don't take care about the ordering. So we need a way to specify if we have different kind of installation to indicate or discover the digs, partitions, the kind of file system. If we have LBM or RAID, the situation is getting more complicated, but you need a way to parameterize to indicate how this profile is going to be there. If we are going to use battery phase, uh, you need to indicate more sub volumes and maybe a prefix for those sub volumes. If you are going to use a snapper, you also need to indicate a default, <coughs> a default uh, suit volume that is going to be used when you mount this device. We completely forget about secure boot UEFI. We forget about users. Of course, service, we, we only take care of one target, but that's all. And we take care manually of the CS root environment. All those components are missing. And you can provide that with a better script using maybe a real programming language like Python, Ruby, or whatever. So uh, the, the proposal that Yomi is doing is uh, let's do the installation in a different way. We are going to use a, a, a configuration manager system that in this case is Salt. I don't know if you know Salt, but Salt is, uh, is a configuration manager system. It's kind of like of Chef of Ansible, at least in principle. It's they are both uh, taking care of the same 
problem space, but it's, uh, the architecture is completely different. So it's something that, like a puzzle. Is you can play a lot, and you can have very, very advanced configuration options there. The default option is to have a master and a minion. So it's going to be, we are going to have a node that is going to have a, a service that is called master, so master. And it's going to take care of controlling the different minions that are living in your, the, the, the different device of your, of your network. They have some advantage, but you can optionally remove the minions and optionally remove the master. Uh, you need eventually one of them. And you can have very funny and crazy architecture based on reactors, so you can uh, listen in some kind of event. So if one of the nodes is changing the configuration of the list of some, doing something crazy, the master can capture some event and react based on the kind of event that is happening. Maybe you want to uh, shoot down a service and restart, or you want to uh, change some parameters of the configuration. So it's a nice piece of technology that is a... Uh, uh, is able to do great stuff. Of course, they, they have his own kind of concepts or uh, uh, words or jargon that is only alive in, in, in the salt uh, realm. So they have the concept of grains, pillar, execution mode, state mode, and salt state. But it's, maybe it's more easy to see that here. So this is the typical master uh, minion configuration. We have a node that is going to have the master, and we have three nodes that contain the minion. In the minion side at the right, no, at the I, your right, you have the, the grains. Grains is the minimal data, data that the minion is going to export to the master. I'm going to publish, OK, this minion is going to have, or is currently having this CPU, this amount of hard disk, amount of memory, this network, MAC address, whatever, whatever. It's very basic information that the minion is publishing. In the other side, we have uh, execution modes, mod modules. Execution module is like a, a small action, a single action, basically uh, done in Python, that is going to make something. This something is whatever you can think of. For example, you have module to uh, start a service. You have module to remove a file. You have module to create directories. You have module for whatever elements. And it's only doing that. If, if managed to do that, it's going to return true. And if fails, maybe you have an exception or some nice report about why it fails. On top of that, on top of this uh, basic element that is an execution module, you have an state module that is again a Python code that is going to leverage several execution models in order to reach a an state. And this is super cool because this, the concept of a state is uh, the is the, the 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 concept that is going to make Yomi quite different from the rest of the installers. And a state is going to guarantee that certain configuration is already in place. If not, it's going to make decisions in order to reach this uh, final state that we want. We have also states uh, do, do, cannot be confused with the state models because the states are something declarative. It's a YAML document that the user or the uh, admin describe that is going to put in order different uh, a state module. So you are going to first make sure that the Apache, for example, is uh, installed. There is going to another uh, state that is going to be sure that the Apache service is going to be running, that the server directory is going to be in place, that the index file is going to be there with the proper username and, and permissions. So th those declarative documents are the ones that are going to orchestrate those state execution modules. We have the pillars. The pillar is the data that the states are going to use in order to have a proper configuration. So for example, we can have an state that is going to be sure that Apache is going to be installed, but Apache can have different names in different distributions. Via a pillar, I can provide all the names that uh, this package has in my different distributions. So we have for one side the state that is going to uh, be sure that certain state is going to be there, and a pillar that is the data that the state is going to, be, to, is going to use. And between both sides, we have a bus. And this bus is the channel of communication, be communication between the minions and the master, and can be used to, to, to deliver events. So if one of the nodes 
uh, is uh, uh, doing something, I can find an event that is going to be collected by the master and act accordingly. So, yeah. so we know what the execution mode, so this is execu the execution mode is the unit element that is going to take care of one single problem. The state mo module is the piece of code that is going to guarantee that a state is reached, so it's going to validate the input, take care that uh, it's going to check the current status, it's going to uh, make decisions about the, the actions that needs to be done in order to reach the final state. If uh, you don't provide the test parameter, those actions are going to be meet to, to, to be done, and later it's going to recheck again the final status and compare with the plan. And if there is some kind of difference, okay, maybe some problem happen. Something very nice about this, this proposal: if you you are able to express all your problems in this kind of semantics, is that you can fix a wrong configuration reapplying your state. And as a side effect, that means that if your state is already in place, you can reapply several times the same state and nothing is going to change. You don't break, you have it impotent. Again, solid state are the, the declarative uh, uh, document and have this kind of shape. So it's, uh, in the first uh, example, we have a way to express the uh, that a device is mounted. You can see that we put mount mounted. So we are going to guarantee that the mount point is going to be in place with the proper uh, permissions that the device is present and that the partition can be mounted and the file system meet with the, the current uh, state that you have. If everything goes in place, this state is going to be executed. If not, he's going to try to make the missing elements in place in order to guarantee that again you have this device mounted in the proper place. You can have something more complicated like prepare k exit. You have this command run that is actually is an execution module. And you can see that you can put random shell script there. This is very bad behavior, but you can do that. That the status of the check if the state is meet or not can be in a different in a in the different line on your in your declaration. And the very nice thing is that this uh, declarative document can be enriched with a template file. So you can provide logic on top of your logic. So it's like a macro, like if you were a Lisp developer and you can provide macros there. And you can make decisions based on the pillars. So the data, that is the pillars, can be read from the state and you make decisions inside the, the YAML document to hide certain elements of your document or to show another one. So you can, using the, the, the pillars and the grains, provide a different description of the state. So the final element is the, the pillar, and something very cool about the pillar is that it's also intelligent. You can enrich a traditional YAML document that is something trial-like, declarative, and very flat and plain, with uh, a template. So that means that you can dynamically change your data based on the description that the minion provides to the master. So if a master has a different kind of ID, so every master, every minion has an ID, you can change, for example, the file system you are, you are going to apply. And this is extremely powerful because you are able to inject your own grains. So grains is basically a Python code that is executed and published a result in a namespace. And you can query that from your data. So now, now the, 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 the idea is super clear. We are going to make an installer that is a sold state. So the master plan, this is like my, my master plan here. For each basic installation, we are going to make sure that, for, sorry, for basic action, we are going to create an execution module. Uh, because SALT is a very big project, probably we have uh, the action already in place in, in, in the repository in GitHub. If not, we are going to implement the missing parts or uh, fixed bugs or whatever. Next step is that for every high level action, like for example, mounting a device, partitioning a device, creating a user, we are going to make sure that we have a state module that is going to uh, uh, properly do the action that they want or reach the state that they want to be reached. 
So again, we reuse the one from upstream. If not, we extend that and will reach in, in, in the salt repository. So salt is an open source project, and we are going to contribute the missing parts that we need in the main repo. And if there is not there, nothing there that uh, we need, we are going to implement something for Scratch and try to upstream that. After that, we are going to take care of what is really yummy, that is the SLS, the YAML file, that is going to order the different uh, states. We are going to provide a way to parameterize all the, the data. The data, of course, is uh, something that is responsibility of the user, but we can provide some examples for that. And we have join. So I have a small demo. This demo is a two-node installation, and I try to be wildly different in the kind of installation. In one node, we are going to have a, a BIOS machine, and we are going to install microS. If you know microS, it's a transactional update operating system. So that means that we are going to have a battery phase in a random-only way. And we have a second node. In that case, it's not a BIOS, it's a UEFI node. Uh, no secure boot, it's going to have two hard disks and we are going to use uh, LBM, BatterFS for the root and XFS for, for home. This was like uh, uh, the traditional tumbleweed was installed with this configuration, not, and now it's everything BatterFS. So let's try to do that here. I, I, I have the demo in my repo, so basically what I did here is that I have a nice script that is going to boot two, two BMs, so we have two BMs. Those BMs are uh, the hard disk is completely clean, there's nothing there, and I boot the VM using a, a small tumbleweed image, or an open source image. It's, so, it's really minimal, it's a live image, and the only thing that is uh, different from a normal one is that they contain the salt minion. Actually, this is not even what makes different, because tumbleweed provides the salt minion by default. So, it's a, we have the salt minion. We have a salt master in in somewhere. So we have the salt master here. And we, we make sure that we can, we can see from here, we can see our minions. So we have two nodes and both af, uh, with a pin return true. So yeah, we can see that uh, they, are, they are there. We have pillars, and we have two pillars. One is microS.sls that is going to be applied, or this data is going to be read only one node. And we have a different data that is going to be only read for the second node. So you can see here that uh, we have a, like a section for configuration. Obviously, we need a way to uh, define the partitions. So we describe the devices that we have and the partitions that are living there. We have the, this type. Uh, we have this type. In that case, you you you. It's about the 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 the. the how this partition is going to be used in that case with a FE partition or LLVM. Because we have an LBM device, we are going to also provide all the information for the logical volumes that we expect there. We can use the same kind of uh, parameters that uh, are expected in the CLI tools that LBM is going to, to use. We have a different section for the file system, so we can refer to a partition or a logical volume that is um, for the PR point of view, is uh, not different. It's only data. We have a very complicated schema for suit volumes with a prefix. We have uh, wow, crazy stuff here. We have an XFS, for XFS file system for home. The bootloader we require that is going to be in one of these devices, and we want these partitions there. And this is something kind of similar for microS. Again, we have a single device here, the file system, those are suit volumes very specific for the, for the, for the micro uh, installation. We have uh, parameters like copy and write. We have, um, yeah, the bootloader maybe is a bit more complicated. We, have, we need to provide some parameters that the group loader is going to require. The patterns, the source, of course, is going to be, it's going to be different. And yes, we, we want, of course, one service that is going to be running that is a sole minion. The nice thing is that when the machine is going to be installed and is rebooted, 
the minion that is running inside the new machine is possible to be connected to the master and with the, the uh, job is taking care of copying the certificate and everything in order to to make of this process transparent so we can provide a high state this is going to use the network and we have a monitoring tool that is going to capture those events that I was talking about and show the status of the installation. So meanwhile, because this is an installer, let's finish the presentation. So now everything is more clear. We have Python code that is living in the sold space and we have a YAML declaration file that is uh, what is the Yomi problem. We upstream all the code. The current status is that uh, all the key components are living now in salt, all this in the development branch. So you can take this branch and Yomi is going to work. So we take care of fixing all the bugs and missing features for part dead, for zipper. Uh, we want to plan to do that for, for different package managers like the Debian or Red Hat. We provide very nice uh, new tools about hardware information. Of course, ButterFS needs uh, a big revamp in upstream. We, we, we use it, it uh, quite a bit, so it's normal that we require more from, from different distribution. We provide a very nice CS root module for taking care of uh, all the dirty details of uh, uh, CS root. We have a very nice uh, module that is free, that is able to clean your CS root for you, so you, you are able to take a picture of the CS root, install garbage, and recover uh, the previous state of the CS root uh, in, uh, using the package manager. Um, more crazy stuff that we do. Eventually, those declarations of the states, uh, be, meanwhile, you are providing more features the tree of the states is going to go going deeper and wider. So this is a picture of two or three months ago. Now the tree is bigger. But it's taking care of all the state that we saw in the first slides about the installation, bootloader, other partition, etc. And much more. So we 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 provide the partition that is obviously the, the more complicated part have different ways of operation. This one that is uh, using linear programming is able to make decisions for, do, for you about the size of the partition. So we have very crazy stuff already in place. But this, uh, uh, so far is, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the tricky elements of here is that you are, Yomi is a, a state that is composed of different state. And composing, even for a state, is a bit tricky. So there are, some, quite, so, some challenge on, on compose, composing states, but we, we managed to resolve that. And the current status is that we, we can do crazy stuff. We, we install OpenSUSE like crazy, lead, tamper with micro S, we have Kubic. It's still not at the same level that just, for example, missing parts are resize of the partition. It's planning to be do, so there is a plan to, to provide this feature, looks, be catch. Maybe the network configuration can be better. But we have already Yomi integrated in different solutions. For example, in Kubic and Susan Manager. The Kubic one is extremely cool because you have a nice CLI tool that you can see, OK, we have a new node in the, in the, in the network. Please install uh, Tumbleweed and use QADM for, for, the rest of your, your, uh, for, for the rest of the action that needs to be done in order to install Kubic, no, sorry, Q, uh, Kubernetes. Everything is upstream, everything is open source. All my contributions to SALT are possible to reach from SALT stock. John is living in the OpenSUSE namespace in GitHub. And yes, all the package and all the image are in, in, in OBS at your disposal. Um, eventually, this is everything that I have to say. I don't know if uh, anyone was using SALT before or if you have any question or comment. So thank you. Yeah, maybe um, I have a question. So when you use this configuration to install the machine, are you also able to um, use it for configuration? Like, 
for the long time configuration? I, I don't get the question, sorry. Like, uh, once you put all the configuration to install the machine, are you also able to modify it later? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, this is an state. So if the state change, for example, if you provide new patterns that you would to be there, new users, yes, this is going to change in the proportion of your change. There are always limitations. For, for example, if you, uh, today I, 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 we are not supporting resize of the partition. There are complications about the resizing. You can break the stuff. So this part needs to be taken care of. But uh, everything else can be done during installation or post-installation. Something very neat about Yomi is that because we have a way to control CS root and we can inject a state inside the CS root, you can go super far in the configuration, in the provisioning of your node before you have the reboot. So imagine that you are doing a starting service inside the CS root, uh, sending commands inside the CS root, uh, I don't know, like half, half a almost full uh, open stack or Kubernetes installation before you have the reboot. You can go very far there. So that means that if you decide to reapply the, 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 the change in a current installation, those changes are going to be propagated. In that case, not inside the CS root, but inside the, the real machine. Okay, question. I, maybe I missed something, but uh, this is like a chicken and egg problem. You have to have the salt agent first to make this all work. So how do you mm, yeah. work around this? Yeah, this is a, yeah. So we have the salt master, no? The salt master is, is a node that is going to be there, can be your laptop. So imagine that you have Pixie boot in your laptop. So you can inject the kernel in it RD, a root file system that is going to contain the salt minion. You have another option, that is the one that you said here. You have a DVD or USB stick that you plug into the machine and boot from there. And you are going to have the salt minion. The only thing that you really need to bake, break this cycle is a kernel, a run image, and a minion. It's the only thing that you need. You can provide whatever you want. A SD card, a USB, Pixie boot, via firmware, whatever you want. So you break the, the cycle, injecting a minion, whatever, with whatever mechanism that you have. No more questions then. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you. And we have a short break before the next talk will be about NixOS. <laughs>